Claude's grand final week for the AFL's recruiters with the national draft to be held over two nights this week. Hundreds of budding players will be hoping to have their name called out to realise their AFL dream. Drew Jones and Sarah Olley explain how it'll all unfold. Yeah, one of the great nights on the Australian football calendar. The AFL draft, Sarah, on Wednesday night, there's going to be hundreds of budding young AFL stars hoping their names are going to be read out by one of the 18 clubs. For those who don't know a lot about the draft, Sarah, tell us how it all works. Yeah, well, it's also across two nights now. So on Wednesday, we have the first round. So these are going to be some of the more well-known names. And then the second night, much more names are read out. But a really exciting two days for these bidding draft prospects and their families as well, because they sacrifice so much time. But the draft, well, it really is an equalisation measure. So, measure. So if you finish last, like the Kangaroos did, you get pick one. Yeah. So you get access to the best talent in the country. Now there's a South Australian who's mm. been, I guess, for a long time now talked about as that prospective number one pick. Who's that going to be? Jason Horn Francis. Yes, so he looks like he's destined to go to the Kangaroos. We haven't actually been told officially, but it's kind of the worst secret at the moment, I guess, with the draft. So Jason Horn Francis, he played quite a bit of sand full footy this year, which is against men and performed really well. Yeah, three goals, three in a final. He yeah. post a couple of times. That was the performance that really probably solidified his spot at number one. So Sarah, it's going to be a unique draft because one of the great traditions, yes. I think, in world sports, certainly in, in football, is the father-son rule. So can you tell us a little bit about that and what the history of it is? The father-son rule came about because Ron Barassi, who is arguably one of the greatest players of all time, well, his father, Ron Senior, he died in the war and Melbourne really wanted him to play for them. But he was zoned back then. You were zoned, depending on where you lived. He was zoned to Carlton and Collingwood. So Melbourne actually lobbied the VFL, as it was then known, to have priority access to Barassi Jr. And they said yes, and that's how the father-son rule was born. And it it is so uh, distinct, I guess, to the AFL, isn't it? It's unique around the world, that's for sure. Mm. And we're going to have two father-sons this season right at the very top of yep. the draft. So Josh Dacos plays for Collingwood. Peter Dacos, his father, premiership player at Collingwood yeah. and one of the great players of the modern era, the Macedonian Marvel. <laughs> Nick Dacos is the next in line and he is considered by some as the best young player in the country. Played for Vic, Vic Metro, really well developed, rolling with the mullet. So he's got it all going <laughs> for him. So he probably will be bid on with pick two yep. and he's likely oh, he ends up with Collingwood regardless so there's one the next pick in the draft will probably be a father son as well, as well. Sam Darcy yeah. son of Luke who played for the Western Bulldogs and there are big raps on Sam as well, a and key he, position prospect. He's still growing, apparently. Yeah. I think he's 205 centimetres. He's grown a further two centimetres yeah. this year, and he plays forward and back. But I'll tell you what, the dogs are doing well because they got Jamari Ugelhagen, the number one pick through their Next Generation Academy, and now they're looking to get an absolute ripper in Sam Darcy. So we, if there's 18-year-olds, there's mature age yep. players who are hoping to be drafted for the first time. But there's a name that slid across <laughs> our desk who's nominated for the draft. What can you tell us? Uh, Shane Mumford, he loves to retire. He's retired twice and now he's nominated for the draft. Now, there is a bit of method to the madness. We think that the Giants are kind of using this as a break glass in case of an emergency. If their ruck stocks do run low next year, he may be able to nominate for the mid-season draft. And you have to have uh, nominated for the draft to then nominate for the mid-season draft if you are an older player like Shane Mumford and you want to get back to your original club but I'll tell you what he just loves to go around one more time doesn't he? I just, I just think he probably feels there's one more mummification <laughs> left in his career so Mitch Duncan just, Watch out. Yeah, just missed that game uh, just one more name for you Sarah Finn Callahan. Mm -hmm. uh, he's probably going to be drafted in the top five or six being compared to Marcus Bontempelli oh, uh, so he's got a lot to live up to but it's going to be a, a, a fascinating night yeah. but a really exciting night Dreams are going to be made uh, around the AFL, so uh, you can tune in for all the coverage here on Fox Sports News, but Wednesday and Thursday night, the AFL Draft.